I think we've got a problem in how we think about the future now. There are big majorities in many countries, including Britain, who think their children will be worse off than they are. I think we need to reinvigorate that shared social imagination because it's completely misleading to think that the way things are is the way they have to be. We have the power to shape the world around us and leave something better for our children and grandchildren. If there's one good thing has come out of the COVID crisis, it has reminded people you can do things completely differently. Things which we were told were quite impossible and we just don't have to accept the way things are as, uh, as inevitable. What we need is a sort of real sense of collective imagination, something that can help us move towards a new vision. Too often we have people in offices, in boardrooms, making decisions about the lives of people that they've never experienced. It's really important to get the everyday person making decisions or at least part of the um, conversation to how we want to shape things going forward. We need imagination and for that we need diversity in imagination and therefore I keep coming back to this idea of collective imagining. We've started working in imagination just this year really. It's been completely enlightening actually, really powerful. Always you find new insights, new creativity and because what comes out of these exercises has had so many more brains, more ideas coming together, it's much richer, much more compelling than anything which just comes from one person or one source. It's something that has to be nurtured over a period of time. I think you, if it's nurtured, you start creating cross-pollinated networks. It means invoking the curiosity, the imagination and the courage to build a community where those ideas can flourish and where people feel safe, whole and like they're part of something greater. There is obviously a problem in this country, maybe in every country, with disillusionment with both the economic system and the political system. But until those in power of all kinds start to really listen deeply to the things that matter to people who are affected by that system, this disillusionment and frustration and anger will just continue. We have to take the power back ourselves. We have the potential to create this future and it means coming together and bringing together all the different voices. Every action that we take today is shaping all our futures. And so I think the way we make our decisions, if we make them in more imaginative ways, we are likely to move towards a future that is perhaps more habitable, more equal and more just. Over the next 20, 40, 50 years, we're going to have to sort out climate change, we're going to have to sort out dramatic ageing, we're going to have to learn to live with powerful artificial intelligence. If we don't strengthen, invest in our shared social imagination, it's really quite hard to see how we will cope with all of these challenges and actually have a, a good society. Many people have realised afresh their own place in the world. I've seen so much more in explorations around our relationships with the more than human world. We should not lose that kind of moment of realisation that we need to consider alternate way of living on this planet. It's never easy to achieve change. But if you're answering a problem, which people recognise as a real problem, if you can tell a story about why the idea makes sense and can be implemented in, in practice, then you will find it spreads. It's a society which is constantly using its own collective intelligence to shape its own collective future. For me, that is the great promise of our time.